Okay, we're going to talk about the lungs and answer the questions. What are lungs, lobes, and bronchopulmonary segments? And what lung structures are ventilated by primary, secondary, and tertiary bronchi? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. So lungs basically bring air into contact with blood via the alveoli. That's their principal function to keep us alive. So there's some alveoli and we blow that up in this little schematic. There's an alveolus filled with air and there's the pulmonary capillaries filled with blood. This is where gas exchange occurs. So basically lungs are bags full of 150 million alveoli to allow us for gas to exchange to occur. That's why the alveoli are the functional unit of the respiratory system and they're found inside of our lungs. Um, let's now talk about some of the surfaces of each of the lungs. There's the mediastinal surface. It's the part of the lung that basically hugs the middle mediastinum where the heart is located. The diaphragmatic surface is the surface of the lungs that sits on top of the diaphragm. The costal surface of the lungs are the surface that touch the ribs. The word costal means ribs. It's a very large surface of the lungs. It goes front, side, and back. And the apex forms the top, or apex, <laughs> of the lungs. If we zoom in, there is the apex, but it's hard to see. It just goes above rib one, right by the clavicle that's not shown in this illustration. But then the subclavian artery and vein basically just bend right over top of the apex. Why is this important? Because if you insert a pick line, which is typically inserted in a vein above the elbow, and it's threaded up to deliver medication into the heart. And, but what can happen is if you insert that pick line and you're threading it through at the root of the neck, if it gets stuck and you push and puncture the vein, look what's right there. That's the apex of the lung. So if you puncture the pleura, you can cause a pneumothorax. There are two lungs that are supplied by the trachea. And I'm going to state the obvious. If the trachea is blocked, no air gets in or out of either lung. Now, the right lung is supplied by the right primary or main stem bronchus. It is more vertical, shorter, and wider than the left primary bronchus. And that's why an inhaled object in the trachea is like the game Plinko, where you see that yellow circle that goes shing, 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 all the way down. Which airway would it go into? Typically, it goes shing down the right primary bronchus because it's more vertical, shorter, and wider. And why an inhaled object can often be found then in the right lower or right middle lobe, depending on its size. For example, in this chest x-ray, there is an aspirated dental crown. Now look where it's located. Down the right primary bronchus. The right lung has three lobes, superior, middle, and inferior lobes that are separated by two fissures. The oblique fissure separates our middle and inferior lobes, and the horizontal fissure separates our superior and middle lobes. The superior lobe is also called the right upper lobe, the middle lobe is also called the right middle lobe, and the inferior lobe is also called the right lower lobe. I know, I know, I'm sorry. I'm just the deliverer. Now the messenger, whatever you say for that. Now let's take a look at a medial view of the right lung. There's the superior, middle, and inferior lobe. Now, this is important to look at because take a look at that middle lobe. You can see it, it's, it's towards the front, but not the back. And the inferior lobe primarily forms the posterior surface. So the oblique fissure and the horizontal fissure, I should have said that, separates our lobes. But take a look at that anterior surface. It's primarily the superior middle lobe. And the posterior surface is primarily the inferior lobe. That's why when you auscultate superior middle lobes, it's on the front of the chest wall. And the inferior lobe, it's on the posterior chest wall. The hilum is the part of a lung where air, blood, lymph, and nerves go in and out of the lungs. There's the right primary bronchus, and its wall is supplied uh, by the bronchial arteries. There's the pulmonary arteries on the right that are in front of the right primary bronchus, and then the pulmonary veins that are then delivering oxygenated blood back to the heart. The tracho tracheobronchial lymph nodes collect lymph from the heart, uh, from the lungs, pardon me, and airways. And so if there is cancer, that's the, this is some of the lymph nodes that the tumor cells could be found. And then there's the pulmonary ligament. 
That was fun. Let's do it again. So here we have some chest x-rays. And so there's the right upper lobe. And there's the right middle lobe in green. And then there's the right lower lobe in purple. Now notice the right lower lobe in the PA you can barely see because it's primarily, as the lateral view shows, in the back. So if we now look as if you can look like Superman all the way through, it would look like this. But the reason why we don't typically see the right lower lobe from the front is because the right middle lobe is towards the front of the lungs as the oblique, uh, the lateral view shows. Okay, let let me show you how this is uh, can be important. So, in this PA, there's a consolidation. It means there's some gunk inside the lung. Is that gunk the consolidation in the right middle or right lower lobe? The only way, the, the primary way to determine this is you look at a lateral view. And now we look over the lateral view, you're like, oh, that's the right middle lobe. That's where the consolidation is. This is why it's important to use both PAs and lateral views to see lobes of chest x-rays. The left lung is supplied by the left primary bronchus. It's more horizontal, it's longer, and it's more narrow than the right. Um, the left lung has two lobes, a superior and inferior lobe that are separated by one fissure, the oblique fissure. There are some things that make the left lung unique. There's only two lobes, not three, like the right. There's this cardiac notch where the left ventricle of the heart snuggles nice and cozy-like in there. And then on the superior lobe, we have this lingula. It's kit that's named because it looks like a little tongue bleh, sticking out. It's the, homo the, the embryological middle lobe. The left lung does not have a middle lobe, but the lingula is its embryological derivative. The superior lobe, because we have to name the crap out of everything, we're anatomists, is also called the left upper lobe, and the inferior lobe, the left lower lobe. Let's do this again, except from this medial view. Superior and inferior lobes separated by the oblique fissure. Now similar, oh, and then there's the lingula sticking out. Now look at this anterior surface. The superior lobe of the left lung, if you're going to auscultate it, you do it from the front of the chest wall, and then the inferior lobe you do from the posterior chest wall because uh, you can see it's located. Because, because, look at the picture. All right, now the hilum of the left lung has the left primary bronchus with its bronchial arteries, and the pulmonary arteries on the left are typically on top of the bronchus. And then there's our pulmonary veins, red because they're delivering oxygenated blood back to the heart. Tracheobronchial lymph nodes and the pulmonary ligaments. Okay, so in the chest x-ray, there's the left upper lobe. Notice how much it's on the superior and anterior surface of the uh, lung field. And then there's the left lower lobe, which is uh, on a big time on the back. Okay, all right. We've done lungs and lobes. So there's a lung and there's a lobe, and each lobe is further subdivided into bronchopulmonary segments, which are a functional subdivision within a lobe. It's encased in its own connective tissue sheath. It's supplied by its own segmental bronchus and pulmonary artery branch. It's a self-contained unit, its own air, its own blood supply, and its own surgical subunit, which means it can be a segment can be resected without affecting neighboring bronchopulmonary segments. So there's our apical, posterior, and anterior bronchopulmonary segments of the right upper lung. They're the bronchopulmonary segments of the right middle, right middle lobe, pardon me, and there is the right lower lobe segments. There are more, but we don't see them in this view. There is the segments of the left upper lobe and segments of the left lower lobe. Here we have all those bronchopulmonary segments, subdivisions of lobes of a lung. Let's do that again, except in this axial chest CT, where we now are going to then see in the, on the top, it shows in color the bronchopulmonary segments. And now let's just scan, we're going up towards the apex, the apical segments, and then we're now scrolling down towards the diaphragmatic surfaces, and then scrolling back up, all of the, just showing all these bronchopulmonary segments. Now, there are the right and there are the left bronchopulmonary segments. Now, here's a mnemonic or, or a method and way to help remember them. Take the first letter of each of them. For the right, we use the funny phrase, 
it's not really funny, but interesting. A palm seed makes another little palm. It's kind of cute, actually. And notice that the first letters give us that statement. And then on the left, we use Asia Alps, the first letter of each of those segments. That's a way to help remember each of the individual bronchopulmonary segments. And that, my friends, are the lungs in a nutshell.